So we're at 80 people for this one. Ay ay ay. We'll see how things go. Southern Serrani, that's uh, what we did Project 13's test stop on. And it looks like it's going to be focusing on this northern sector, Op 4 spawning at the airfield, Blue 4 controlling these three sectors. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a what massive is our building. Mission brief, good sir? It is attack defense, uh, sector control, non sequential. As long as there's still one uh, blue four inside the circle, it cannot be captured, so they need to be cleared before it can be capped, and that's pretty much it. Any questions? Uh, how much ammo are the helicopters given? Enough. Ah, Dane Olaf, I hope I can see you in NA though. I know you, uh, Fun. I see you all the time in NA as the lone FK guy. guy. <laughs> yes. Do I get floaties? No. All right, I'm going to go into our casting channel. Hey, Barbarian will be joining me for this one. But otherwise, a few things to note right off the bat is there's a pretty nice ridge right here. Op4 could put people on. Uh, we might see those 80s uh, get put on the right. You know, massive BTRs here. Uh, I'm also going to be really yeah, curious to go. see how those 24s come in as well. Lira? Yeah, Send what up? In goat Team 6. Hi, we are here. How are you doing? Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. Uh, I am More good. Quick money I, uh, for Lero. Well, you know the saying, uh, can't drink all day if you don't start in the morning, right? Um, no, I don't, but I do now. There you go. How are you? I'm all right. I'm ready to spend seven or eight hours shoutcasting PvP and watching people kill each other. You excited that's to spend that that's the dream. You mean, right? I didn't know you were going to be here. You told me you were. Ah, never mind. Let's yeah, not I bicker know. in front of everybody. Right. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll I thought I'd solo this. I finally get a break from you. It would have been great, but here we are, Barb. <laughs> I mean, there's still time. I can still like cut my stream and leave. Like, oh, that wouldn't be any fun. No. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for the 21 month sub. Shit. Hope you keep enjoying um, the ops. So yeah, Hope you get a kick uh, out of this PVP. Start, so we have some extra time to speak as well. But, um... They got 20 minutes. Yeah, I, yeah an extra five minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, for an 80-person match, that makes sense. Uh, Op 4 has a numbers advantage, but they're using that numbers advantage to fully crew their assets. Uh, I didn't see any support roles. I only saw, uh, like a full Alpha Charlie, and I can... Okay, they got one MG oh. team, because you can tell by the black PKP. Uh, I know... Gosh, I, I'll know his name when I see it, but I've totally lost track of who they're, um, I know Stray jo Dog is the marksman for the Blue Four faction, but I think it's like Rarick or something. I, I have the brain. Wreck, uh, that's it, yep. So what I do is I hit backspace real quick and I just go to the, uh, uh, roster on the left oh, side. Oh yeah, very um, true. It is Wreck. Mark's Marksman is under is always under platoon, and yep. then the mat team is always like D three or something. Yeah, so, so I know op four. Box drop. Op four yeah. isn't fielding a mat team, which I find really interesting because blue four is going to field those two one one threes, but at the squad level, blue mm -hmm. four meanwhile, uh, I saw them go full alpha, full bravo, except minus one combat engineer. So I think they're going to keep those one one threes at the platoon level. And they have a full mat team, and uh, in talking with them locally, uh, a mat team, uh, you have one guy with the launcher, and he has a single round for it, and the assistant has an additional round. So I was kind of teasing Blue for in chat to see what assets they were going to hit with that mat. Are they going to go for the air support, or are they going to go for the BTRs? On this map, it might be tough. I thought I heard... Um, Someone say that there were man pads. Someone said yes, but I don't think that's actually the case. So I think people were just trolling. Yeah, uh, Blue Four has that javelin, which can lock. It can act. It can lock on anything. Lock so on anything with the thermal down. signature, but they do have the uh, configs reduced so that you won't get killed by a mat if it locks onto an infantry guy. So there's no uh, dunk, you know. 
Yeah, no, no pure dunk. Though that might just be ace fuckery. Cause, uh, no, ace no, um, that's that's something in their config. I actually tore it apart uh, last week and looked at what they changed up. It's pretty interesting. Well, so that's what you, usually you tear apart me, but okay. What? No. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry, Bad. No, Get some help. You are my help. Uh, that's that's an unfortunate I, thing for me. I, I don't. Okay. Calm down there, okay? Sorry. That, Calm I I down. Said. It's okay. Uh, I am going to write you a prescription for your horny, sir, okay? Is the prescription a bat to the face? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Anyway. So, actually, going back to this, um, I think Red Fort has a very... Olaf, hope very, to see you there uh, after the storm passes. The There's 80 players on this line. server. It's a 20% number advantage to opt uh, for. It's not perfect for and them, this isn't TSB, this is FNF. There are they can utilize the, a lot of communities uh, that come to this. Uh, up here on the ridge. TSB doesn't so have an official really presence, but we have... Um, be able to see through that so much. Um, we have Scandi Recon, which is uh, a group that plays in TSB. I would say they originated in TSB, to be honest. Well, it's it's very distinct, is what I'm trying to say, from the yep. higher ground to the low ground. I mean, the fog's going to give Blue Four a little bit of cover advantage. Uh, also, with their start don't it does extend to that lighthouse, but I don't see Blue Four putting anyone up there because that's just too big of a range, and I think it's more of a trap idea. Maybe they're marksmen, but the marksman uh, stray dog has instead gone to the far right corner up on the hill. That's not a bad call there because it's going to give some good overwatch. Actually, no. What that uh, lighthouse could be for uh, on the northern side, that could be for the mat team. Um, yes. Because... Yeah, yeah. No, like, there's there's a few decent hiding spots, and the only thing that could really threaten them is a marksman uh, at that range. So if the mat team were to just sit back there, crank their render distance up, they could snipe uh, either the helicopters or the BTR-80 Alpha. Now, I do want to I want to roll this question with you. They have two missiles mm -hmm. and there's two helicopters and two BTR-80s to hit. And since they were in, uh, you know, everyone was in the loadout, uh, not loadout, but um, the roster and they know Blue 4 knows that. They're going to be fielding both BTRs and both MI-24s. So if you were in Blue Force's shoes as the commander, who would you or what would you prioritize your targets to be knowing this terrain? Would you aim for the helicopters or the 80s? Um, well, um, I do want to say I think they might have three missiles because... No, no, uh, it's two. Think... It's two. I, I confirmed it. What, but what about r -Core? I believe he's the missile assistant so, or something. So, the assistant only gets one missile, and the main gunner only gets one missile. Oh, he doesn't have one in one in his bag? Nope. Hmm. Okay, then. Well, then. Um. So, we I have Iceberg. Say... Yeah, go ahead, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, gut reaction or gut instinct would be the helicopters, but, um, well, no, if you go up to where the helicopters would be, the fog actually gets like clearer. I guess there's less fog to see through or however that works. But um, yeah, I think I would probably still say the helicopters, though I would, mm, I don't know. That's a tough call. Cause I, I, they have like five static M2s and then two M2s on the uh, 113s. Yep. So those can take care of the BTRs pretty easily and the BTRs can take care of those pretty easily. So I think that would solve the BTR problem, and yeah, I'd say javelins for the two hinds that they have. Yeah, most people in chat are saying the uh, helicopters. My gut reaction would be helicopters, and after thinking about it for a while, I'd probably still go with that because, I mean, they've got five static M2s that can be put anywhere. They've got a lot of interesting defensive assets, uh, not assets, but positions. And uh, I really like Sector 3. I, I just love this building. There's so many places you can hide a dude in a corner and uh, just make it a nuisance. But uh, just with how open this terrain is, and for those BTR-80s to get into a decent firing position, it's hard for them to kind of limit their avenue of fire here without going up on the big um, ridge line to try to get into the valleys to you know try to limit said avenues of fire. 
but you know if one m2 tucked away could then be like moved to the side and then you know line it up with a btr uh it's really easy to watch uh walk those tracers in on where the btr is firing from compared to you know you in the lowland with uh you know your m2 somewhere in the fog up here uh and that m2 can tear the btr 80 apart so knowing that if i was in op four shoes i probably wouldn't even feel the btr 80s to be perfectly honest uh, I would just keep them in the spawn zone, and I would just use the extra manpower for more MG teams, because those are going to be a lot more mobile than the BTRs themselves. That's just me personally. It's not a bad idea, I don't think. Um, I think that they would want the... So, with the BTRs, I think I only see one BTR crew unless I'm... No, there's there's two. There's two. Okay. So the BTR is like the 113s. They are mobile fire. Uh, they can shoot and scoot. They can lay down suppressive fire from multiple different angles without having to schlep around a static. Um, E1 and E2 are the BTR crews. Resistance to small the arms fire, but like I said, the M2s can pen them pretty easily. Um, what they could potentially use these BTRs for is essentially bait. Helis have limited because, ammo for 12.7. Like yeah. said, they have two javelins. If the MAT team. If one of the BTRs stays really far out and just suppresses from a distance and lures a missile out from the Javelin team, that's one less Javelin, and so they can feel both the Hinds. One of the Hinds will probably get shot down, but the other one would then only have to deal with uh, M2 uh, fire and uh, maybe a M136 if someone tries to test their luck, you know what I mean? Yep, so real quick to interrupt you, uh, Victor, who is the Matt Gunner, he's uh, at where I said the Matt team was going to go, but he's on top of the lighthouse. I wouldn't recommend being up there per se, because that's a very limited area, because, you know, if the BTRs are being fielded, some good 145 millimeter up there would pen uh, that really thin uh, concrete or metal. I don't know what it is, but I know 14.5 will pen it. So, oh, you know, that's decent for Overwatch, but also there's just so many areas up here that you can watch from instead. You know, you can hide behind rocks. If you take fire, you can then pull to the direct west and then come up a different angle. Um, there's just so much you can do, but you also got to remember the Matt Gunner isn't just AT. He's also really good recon because he has a thermal camera. So he can see anything coming and that's going to be able to give blue force some good da uh, data on where op4 might set up their attack and then they can you know maneuver their m2 statics to that position i mean seven m2s firing at one spot is going to react uh create a lot of suppressing fire so we'll Absolutely. just have to see how blue force goes here but yeah no i mean if, if i was op4 i would cha i would change out those two btr 80s for the mat team because the only reason I can see bringing the BTRs in for that 14.5 millimeter is to counter the 113s. Uh, but I would think a mat team, a uh, full mat team with two missiles, could do that just as well. Plus, again, the mat team could go off somewhere with the thermal camera and also do recon. Uh, the MI-24s, I'm going to also say this, I, I would field one. And the only reason for that is because we've seen assets used in Friday night fights in the past and they are almost always squandered. And if when they're not squandered and they're used effectively, some chad with an RPG makes a 450 meter shot on an MRAP. Remember that two weeks ago? <laughs> that crazy yeah. bullshit? How can I forget? Oh, oh. God. So knocked even so... Both the crew. Yeah, it, it was nuts. But, you know, I just, I just don't see any good advantage here op4 has with any of its armor air assets because this is all lowland um like maybe the mi-24 could hide to the south there's a little bit of cover here for it to go down but because blue four has that you know tall position at cabo that uh javelin gunner is gonna pretty much have this complete area just locked down you know so i just I don't know. Like, uh, I feel like, you know, Op4, it's it's a red herring here. They're given a lot of assets, but there's a lot of ways for those assets to get taken down. And all for what? You know, just static guns. Maybe if the 24s had a rocket pot or two, it would be worth it. But, you know, with that static uh, chin 12.7, I just don't see it. Go ahead. Um, so what they're doing 
is go I I they're loading up one of the MI24s with a squad of dudes. Yeah. And if they try and rush the point and an MI24, that helicopter is going down and all the dudes inside are dying. I don't think they're going to rush. I think they're going to try deploying on the rear, which that could work. There's a few low spots they could go. But again, at least in the map border here, uh, the only place that would be safe is the very far south corner. Because uh, otherwise, it's going to be exposed to the MAT team, and the MAT team would then be able to get a really good kill. you got to remember, the helicopters can fly outside of the MAT boundary here, so if they give a really yeah, wide berth, yeah. that would be doable, but at least the entire play area is concerned. Uh, that one corner on the north has just full visibility of everything, and that's why I, I think Blue 4... I'm, I'm gonna say it now, Blue 4 is going to win this unless they have something really stupid happen and have a mass cast somewhere. Because... Yeah, I'm... Well, I was just gonna say with... Yep. I, I agree with what you're saying, like, um, I was looking over at, at point five six to the south, um, of the Blue 4 spawn area, but that's still exposed, there's a lot of foliage, they would have to land at, like... They'd have to uh, land at that military Strela. base on the southern corner, um, because I, I back there has... Strela, or Estrella? Estrella? Is that Estrella? It's uh, at the yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But here's the thing. Again, if they crack up their view distance, they're still going to see it coming to the south because that hill oh, yeah. that the Matt guy's on, if he has his team come up there with him and they pull anything close to the proper 360, just have one guy watch northeast, one guy watch southeast, and one guy watch south, they're going to see anything that gets up there. And again, that's the real advantage of that one spot. And Op4 doesn't really have anything long range to counter it, minus their own mat team, but they didn't take that. Yeah, and even if they were to land safely uh, and get out of there unscathed, that's a, a solid click, click and a half for the uh, infantry to walk. Uh, Do you know how long this round's gonna be? Is it gonna be a 45 minute or an hour? No clue. Probably, I think, an hour, but I, 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 it's a guess. Blue Four's given a lot of good positions here to hold. If I was in Blue Four's shoes, I would probably not use any of them. Maybe the one with the tower, but I would just try to bait Op Four uh, in the fog, really. Is, is that one base? Does it have a tower destroyed for you too? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, know, that's a um. Got it's like Camp something, like yeah, Camp I, Delta I or whatnot. Camp, yeah. Yeah, but it's like. Okay, they got an HQ building, I guess, and I guess they can go up there and, like, do, like, some spotting from up there, but that's not a really good defense point, but I don't know. I, I, I didn't make the map, so. Yeah, because, again, Blue 4 has just a lot of advantage here with that fog by the way at sector three we just saw hockey uh put a dem charge actually it's a remote demo assembly so it's a lot bigger uh in the northeastern corner i'll be curious to see if that gets used later but you know if he um just watches a team of infantry come in because there's only two entrances and these guys don't use enhanced movement you know baiting explosives right next to the doorway is actually a very smart idea so what I think he's doing with that is, you remember the long two-hour one that we did where yep, it was, yep. um, so forty-five I, minutes. I Thank he was you. Saying that it's like that, like Red Four, uh, Blue Four needs to be completely eliminated from the sector for Red Four to capture it. Mm -hmm. um, so since Sector Three doesn't, that looks like they're not going to try and defend it at all. The uh, what was that? Hockey will be waiting for um, the sector to be pit, uh, captured detonate it and then collapse the building hopefully that won't collapse and, the uh, building these aren't collapsible um and the flaw with that plan is someone just has to walk in the doorway and then it's immediately captured so yeah. i i wouldn't I mean, have put the charge there i would have hit it like um outside on the perimeter yeah like you see how um this like palm tree bush thing whatever the frick it's got some room uh that's covered by the uh the brown leaves on the bottom, I would have put it in there instead because they would have just mobilized at the doorway knowing it's cleared. On the back entrance, that's a little trickier. I would have put it under um, one of the benches right by the entrance. Yeah, uh, the, that umbrella-like area. So I like, I like the idea, but it, it's not going to be as effective as he wants. 
Um, I uh, should say real quick, I saw someone in your chat talk about the objective. Uh, it is yep. not, um, it isn't uh, cap zones in order. They can be captured in any order. Captured in any order, order at all. Uh, as long as uh, one blue four guys in it, though, it won't be captured. So it's basically sweep and clear. Uh, and then firefighter told me the round is going to be 45 minutes long for this one. Beautiful. And then I do like seeing how all of these statics are out of spawn. They're kind of spread out. I'm seeing groups have one or two of them, and that's, again, very good because those things can be used to easily counter a BTR-80. What I'm also seeing is up on the northern side, uh, one of Bravo's fire teams has dudes right up to the road. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to try to hold that as a... Uh, you know, just an obvious SSR to come in, or if they're gonna try to go around and counter. But now we're also seeing the Matt team has a um, an extra guy up there. Uh, they put a one one three up there, actually. Oh, that is surprising. I had someone in my chat at saying, "Oh, why don't they put a static up here?" And the only reason for that would be from, let's say, the lighthouse to sector two. That's about what 500 meters give or take mm -hmm. and that's just uh, it, it can range out to like a thousand twelve hundred or something but that's a lot of travel time for that heavy 50 caliber round i actually like this idea with the 113 because this 113 if they're gonna follow the strategy of using the mat team to take out air assets then that means this 50 cal is going to be used to take out the 80s from range because it's a lot easier to hit a fit uh in a btr 80 from this range because you're technically just suppressing it uh compared to a body you know so i yeah, i can agree with yeah. that but uh, they're also uh with that vehicle up there instead of a static it means they can be mobile with it so if they take yeah. fire, the driver can just pull it back and then have it come up a different angle. Uh, and then Blue 4 can tell, you know, other teams to suppress as it maneuvers uh, for a kill shot. But anyway, round has started. We are seeing a truck pushing down the south. Uh, two BTR 80s going forward. Looks like uh, they have infantry in both of them. The truck is just two guys. And the MI-24s are both completely loaded with infantry. And then we have a uh, an MG team going in its own truck as well. So, yeah, those uh, those two M24s, they're going to push right, and they're going to go south and then probably land uh, at the military base to the south, because anywhere else would be a death trap. Yeah, look, they're pulling, starting to pull south, so looks like that's what they're going to do. And, yeah, they land at Samato or that military base and like walk that ridge line where the uh that first truck is heading yeah it looks like they're not going to go for that low ground quick um and they're already dismounting infantry at like the end of the airfield so short what, ride from spawn to the other end of the airfield but um that's kind of what you got to do with this terrain and with the threat of those mat teams uh and that truck's actually running right onto uh, Stray Dog's position. Stray Dog the Marksman. He's got, Yeah, he hears that truck, so he hears them coming. And they're passing within, like, 20 meters of each other. They're just now, running the who's, who's in that Vic, though? Uh, that'd be Fred and Jake Platt, who are Delta lead. And they, they're getting out right in front of them. Yep, so that is one of the MG teams. Ooh. BTR, uh, M2 just opened up, hit someone in the leg right there. If the marksman were to come out, he could get an easy shot, but I don't think he's going to give away his position. But at least they're going to disable that truck. Yeah, it's smoking now. It's, that's not going anywhere. Uh, Plett got shot in the leg, but he's not sticking around. He's going to get into uh, cover before he starts gotcha, making. Gotcha, one second. And yeah, I'm not too certain what their plan was. Maybe they just misread the terrain or something. But Stray Dog, yeah, he's just staying in cover as Fred tries to return fire and uh, just draw some more his way. But now Wheaton's coming up in the other truck with his squad, and uh, Stray Dog's in a really sticky situation now. Yeah, so it looks like some of Op4 uh, changed up their stuff because I'm seeing two MG teams now. Uh, you, they originally started with some full squads, but I think in that last unit reshuffle to get that finalized number advantage they um went for mg teams instead mm -hmm. meanwhile those m uh, mi-24s it looks like they're gonna go perfectly on that southern side like i predicted uh that's going to be very interesting uh i just 
Th there's no good angle they can really come down in the lowlands without coming from the super duper south. But we'll just yeah. have to see um, where they decide to go. Because if they can get to Sector 3 unmolested and get a foothold, that's going to make it a lot tougher for Blue 4 to get its advantage. But now we're seeing Delta. Um, that's part of Op 4. Basically, their MG team is starting to shoot at uh, Alpha's position for Blue 4. But that's a really good call there because that's going to be distracting the eyes of the Southern teams from getting into this AO. And Op 4 just lost a helicopter! From what? What happened? They got shot they, He crashed. You're kidding. He crashed and killed an entire squad of dudes. That, 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 that's, that that's, that's, that's it for Blue Four. Uh, that's it for Op 4, that, in my opinion. That was the, yeah. That, that negates their entire... That was an entire okay. squad. That was Vlad, Ding it was Dingo. Dingo was in that. Oh. <laughs> Along with a bunch of the uh, Serbians. <laughs> There's still some survivors from Bravo 2. I, too, uh, I saw him do like a glide Dingo. landing. He was way too close to the other chopper and he tried to compensate, but he uh. just, yeah, he came in too hard and killed himself. So... Blue Four is not going to know that, but at the same time, like, damn, you know? Yeah, that's a major yikes in my book. That's, yeah, like, that's the first, like, actual accident I've seen in a Friday night fight. But, hey, I mean, this is EU. It's it's different from NA, so there's there's the difference right there. But anyway, back to the main action. Uh, <laughs> one of the Op 4 guys is unconscious. Stray Drog is calling up, uh, crawling up this uh, little ridge. Um... We have Hoyt down here. I think he's pulling security, which is interesting, but I'm not sure. I think maybe Stray Dog sees him. Uh, he is trying to line up a shot. Yeah, but uh, we'll see what happens there. Stray, Stray Dog's in a very bad position because his desert uh, Marpat sticks out like a sword. It does against that grass. green bush, so he has to be careful. Op 4, meanwhile, maneuvering a squad and those two BTR-80s down the... Um, the Northern SSR, and then that uh, Op 4 squad, for what it's worth, I mean, they've got, a, they've got a lot of ground to cover, but unfortunately that flank is not going to be as effective as they want because they've lost 50% of their force due to an accident. That's that's very unfortunate. Like, you know, I we, we laugh about it, but I, I don't think... Not, like, that was literally Op 4's number advantage, you know? So it's... Yeah. Uh, it's hard to see that now, because now the balance has been completely shifted. Now Op4 has to work a lot harder to even have a chance here. And Op4 just lost their second truck. It's drawing fire, and uh, it's smoking now. Yep. So those trucks are very unlikely to cook off to uh, single M2 ammo. But Stray Dog is still crawling up here, being incredibly cautious. Uh, and we have still have people up on that SSR watching the northern flank. They did put a little... Um, fortification down the middle of the road to deny any movement from vehicles and then you have bob right here hiding in some bushes possibly yeah. waiting for one of those btrs to move in because this is what this is charlie and both of the btrs up here as well as platoon uh lead up here on the north just the very obvious route i guess but that's the thing about the obvious route is that it's you know, sometimes you don't think they're going to go the obvious way. I mean, remember with that uh, one on Northern Sarani, mm -hmm. where the attacking force just walked right through a giant fucking valley that no one was Oh, yeah, that kill zone first. that no one made, yeah. 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 That was such a waste. But, by the way, uh, that Southern Op 4 team, they're going to hug the side of the map, and they're going to try their best to get into the low grounds immediately. That is a good call, because that's going to help conceal them in the fog as they move up from the southern flank. Mm -hmm. If this and battle Stray continues, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, Stray Dog is making his way up the the low ground where he's at, right in between two MG teams, and Toda, Toda might see him here. Well, he's well within view, but I don't think he's paying attention. By the way, um, Op Four has started firing along the northern flank. Uh, Blue Four is responding with an M2 static. Uh, but we'll have to see how that comes in, and their, uh, oh, commander... Oh, he's, he's gonna get gunned down by that machine gun. Yeah. There he is. 
I think he's hit far. I don't think he's ABSing. I don't know. Uh, I mean, Foose here, he is, um... He was uh, bipoded, so I don't know. But yeah, Stray Dog just attempted to wake up, it failed. But now, uh, Op4 is gonna get Blue for his Marksman Rifle, which in this environment is, could be very, very helpful here uh, to pick people off, especially uh, since he's gonna be tied with the machine gun teams. Uh, I know the yeah. Op4 Marksman is also uh, somewhere up here. Uh, it's Rack, he's uh, moving down the left flank, but if um, they were to get one of the assistants to the Delta teams to get that marksman rifle, that could really, really help them out. Because at this rate, Blue Four is going to need every advantage they can get. Also, we're seeing some Op4 guys firing at the uh, Matt team position on the rear. Um, honestly, at this range, the muzzle velocity of those bullets isn't going to um, really do much damage. Also, we're seeing the Matt team uh, kind of highlighting with their thermal cameras and binoculars uh the op4 group to the north now oh yeah they're they're all lined up in a little three musketeers set up oh there goes a missile yep so they're gonna burn one on this uh that hits the btr uh btr is now cooking oh, and yeah, it's yeah. firing to the left for whatever reason so I guess um, Blue Four's orders are just to shoot at whatever uh, they see uh, first. Boris is still in the BTR. He doesn't feel the flames there. He gets out, but... I think he's going to make it out if he goes prone, yeah, at least. He... Yeah, he's, he's far enough. Yeah, he's far enough. He's really lucky, but... Hmm. And the second BTR is rolling up right behind it. It's sticking to the woods now, but... Uh... I wonder what that other MI-24 is. It's just holding out uh, over by uh, Bonanza and Bresso, but... Um, it's yeah, J for the weapons trace, right? Because I've been hitting that all day and I haven't seen it come up. It's P. Ah, yeah. that's why. I'm a dumb dumb. I always forget uh, that so damn yeah. button. There I we know. go. It, Sorry, it, guys. It's, I it's literally only forget for the wrong one. But, um... No, the, uh... It, if BCR, I mean, they're shooting at the mountain now as well, um, and um, or where the Matt team is, I should say, because there's someone named Mountain. Yeah. But uh, they're shooting at the Matt team's position, so if they can get this other uh, missile used on them. Um, so the BTR, um, if you are watching tracer lines, uh, if the tracer lines are red, that means the bullet is still going at its quickest muzzle velocity to do the most damage. Uh, then it goes into blue, and then I believe green. Mm -hmm. um, blue means it's reduced, and then green means it's not going to do much to uh, tickle. But yeah, with that other um, 80 firing up here, the Matt team really needs to make a decision here because they don't know that Op4 lost that other helicopter to an oopsie. Right. So they made that shot with the intention of, I guess they're going to have the M2s fire at the uh, helicopters, which I can see why they do that, because the helicopter needs to be stationary to be accurate with those chin guns. Yeah, or at the very least, uh, be on a pretty stable flight path, you know, making a, a pass on something. Um, we're seeing scale Oh, you're right, yeah, the marksman would have a platoon radio. Get a decent position to watch the uh, southeastern approach. I don't think he took um, his gun. Nope, he left yeah, it. Yeah, this is looking tougher and tougher for Red 4. Um, the southern team is starting to move up in the, uh, the completely open, um, sandy area. Mm hmm But, um, yeah, like, they, they have no mobility. Both the trucks at, um, uh, Delta, I think, brought. They've been taken out. Uh, one of the BTRs is out, one of the MI-24s is out, and they have nothing else here in the AO. They have some other stuff at base. They could ferry some people back to base and get the rest of those trucks but apart from that they're they're gonna be walking a long long way not nah, so like I, in my opinion op for is delta teams are in the perfect position to overwatch this ao because there's no other really good high ground with the exception of sector three but they don't know what's at sector three uh blue four i think has everything defensive the way they want it they've got guys watching south of sector one guys watching north of sector two and they've completely abandoned sector three op four is going to be able to get a strike team to come in and hit sector three that's going to allow the delta teams to pull in and actually garrison sector three on the rooftop to still give them good overwatch eyes and let them get closer um 
but then from there, it's going to be very hard to hit blue force positions, uh, just simply because op four doesn't have that numbers advantage anymore. Yeah. Um, side note, um, you said, did you say earlier that FNF doesn't use enhanced movement? I thought I saw that they didn't have it. Um, do they? Yeah, because I just saw um, one of Blue Force Squad's uh, hop over a fence. Okay, so that is my bad then. I apologize. <laughs> That's fine. But um, yeah, they, uh, they, they they use that, which opens up a lot of things for them to uh, do, especially now that, I mean, just looking around uh, Sector 2, you can see they barricaded a lot of the uh, entrances. I think I got F and F confused with TMTM. That's my bad. So the northern uh, force has halted except for one guy going down, I guess, to scout out. But I think they're also waiting for the uh, southern op four group to get into position. Uh, 15 minutes have more or less to lap. So there's still another 30 minutes here to go for the round. It's still plenty of time for op four to make a move. But for now, we're just having long range skirmishes. And I would assume the marksmen for Delta will be trying to get a few licks in. We have Gore is pushing up way on his own. Uh, yeah, he's um he was part of the BTR crew that got shot, uh, destroyed, excuse me. So I guess he's just doing some force recon here. Uh, meanwhile, we have Skater Boy in the M2113, uh, and he's firing up on the ridge line, doing just a general blanket suppression. He doesn't know where they are. And that's letting Op4 kind of... They're lining up shots here. I see both teams are, uh, you know, set up with binoculars and whatnot. And we have the 24 coming in on the south. Oh, yeah, I see it. They're coming in fast, so it looks like they're going to be trying to do some kind of gun run. So I'm seeing some activity on the Blue 4 Matt team. Uh, uh, the M2... Sure. Oh... No, they spotted. They spotted it with the javelin. That's that's gonna kill it. I guess they're baiting the other shot. I don't know, but uh, Victor's gonna be able to get the lock here in a second. Got it. The uh, uh, chin turret isn't even looking at the lighthouse. I I think they're just baiting the last shot out. I I don't know, yeah, but yep. Yeah, there's I the rocket. It. And impact. Gets the tail rotor, and uh, they might be able to auto hover out of there. If they didn't kill the engine, but um So I mean that's at least gonna let the uh BTR eighty advance with the northern group. Speaking of the northern group, it is doing a large advance here. BTR eighty staying in the back. Uh if they've been counting uh bat team shots, they would know that now that javelin gunner isn't going to have any ammo left. Oh, and, and the twenty four and it gets splashed down. Um uh, that is not returning anytime soon. Well, they, uh, the crew survived, so they can have a nice little swim, uh, yeah, turn into uh, Navy SEALs. Swim. Yeah, it'll, it'll work, it'll work, trust me. Uh, I just saw Gorg get killed, and now the northern fight is in full swing here. Oh, Jesus, yeah, that's flat ground, not a lot of terrain covering, especially for Red 4. Blue 4, they have uh, some solid walls to get the M2 on the 113 supporting them. So this is, uh, the pop and smoke, that's about all they can do right now. Um, the 113 is also like perfectly uh, high here for the gun to fire. Yep, do a massive blanket suppression here. Oh, that is that's gonna... nasty. No. I'm waiting for a rocket shot to come at and for, on the uh, 113 try and take out the turret, but um, yeah, that is so dirty. That is just right. I mean, he's not going for accuracy, he's just going for general suppression. He's pretty much stopped this advance, which is a very good call there. I'm seeing people getting uh, knocked unconscious, getting killed. And in all honesty, I don't see this northern attack really doing too well. We see the BTR now coming in, but as soon as that 113 spots it, it's pretty much toast. Yeah, between the 113 and the uh, M249 in the bunker, operated by Goatland, uh, something I think you would enjoy. Um, Oh, it's yeah. There's a lot. It's of red, then green, then blue. Fire going down on this advance. By the way, I lied on the coloring. It's red, then green, then blue. Ah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, Delta is also making a distraction. I think they're just trying to draw aggro away 
from uh, that one squad to get up into Charlie. I'm not seeing any aggro go under there. Again, would be so much more effective if that uh, one crash didn't happen, but yeah, they gotta work with what they got. Alpha, meanwhile, we're having more people getting knocked unconscious here. Uh, in my opinion, these guys are screwed. Yeah, so there wasn't much that they could do. Um, yep. Once... Uh, I'm, I'm still like... I'm questioning why they bait out the shot with the, with the MI-24 and not the other BTR, I guess. Well, I mean, at least here the BTR can help um, against the machine gunners, but at the same time, um, if that M2 gets a good line on them, they're, they're pretty much screwed. Not to mention that they still have static M2s as well. As wait, 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 wait. Yeah. So we have Bob Winchester. He was hiding back here with uh, a 136. And that's probably why they used the Javelin on that air asset, because that 136 just got a beautiful side shot. Uh, Bob was hiding in those two bushes back there. I saw him uh, testing his 136 earlier, but he got the shot on that uh, BTR-80. And now Opbor has no armor assets left. Oh, dude. And that's what I was saying, use the BTRs to, j bait, up, to j bait the Javelin. Uh, cause yeah. I mean, Blue 4 had a plan, though, but they still have one helicopter to worry about, but they don't know that it's been shot down. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm, I'm sure that they have some M2s sticking back, or, you know, they still have both the 113s still up. Like, this is a completely failed assault. So we have uh, Delta overwatching team. Charlie, um, excuse me, Delta is overwatching Alpha coming in to take Sector 3. There's still that potential mm -hmm. push, but... Yeah, I mean, this sacrifice play, it's not going to be effective because Alpha just doesn't have the numbers to uh, launch an attack. you got to also consider, they're going to be fighting against Blue 4 Alpha, which is, for the most part, fresh. They've been suppressing and uh, fighting with some of Delta's forces, but I wouldn't expect that Blue 4 uh, having beyond maybe one KIA here, uh, just because of the range of the fight. Yeah, and... With Red 4, I don't believe there's even a, a chance for them to clutch it, because unlike the what we've seen the past couple of weeks, is this is not an objective map. This is you take and hold an area. So the, the fact that all Blue 4 has to do is stay in a circle. They don't have to protect a terminal. They don't have to protect a Oh, my cache. gosh. One person alive. Hey, Barb. Hey, Barb. Yes? If Op 4 gets the time, the pilots are going to the map position. <laughs> They will stomp out the blue format oh position. God, they're gonna, they're gonna... They have become the Navy SEAL. That's like 600 meters. See, what Op4 should have done is they should have just flown right in and gotten too close for that javelin. <laughs> and then when they explode, they'll be right on top of the MAD team, so the MAD team will go down too. But meanwhile, looking back at Op4's northern flank, I'm seeing at least five bodies. And it has just been a slaughter. And I'm not sure if Blue 4 has even taken a single KIA yet, other than Stray Dog. Right. Um, let's check real quick. Uh, I'm checking the roster. I only see Stray Dog as dead. Yep, me too. So. Meanwhile, Op 4 is just. Oh, so many skulls. All right. There's Sector 3. That charge is out of position, though. So, yeah, it's it's not going to be used. Again, if it was put under the bench. Oh, oh it did bring the building it. down. Never mind. I lied. Oh I thought you God, couldn't collapse Leroy. that building. Oh, my God. Leroy, how many years have you been a Zeus? Come on. I didn't know you could collapse those. I could have. <laughs> ah, whatever. Okay, three up, four guys down. They're going to wake back up, though. Very yeah, cheeky play right up. there. That's also going to oh. deny Delta teams the ability to mount up in that building. And that's, yeah. Like, they're going to have to get medics up there. Now Now Alpha knows they're over there, too. So they're going to blue for Alpha, to clarify. They're going to now set up uh, defensive flanks on the southern spot. We're seeing rounds also getting exchanged. So, yeah. Um... Can, but it takes a lot to do it. it has, they put down one demo charge assembly. On Wait, look, look to the south. Bob has run up to this BTR and a grenade just killed him. South, the yeah, Opfor is down to like seven people here. Oh, uh, this is. Oh, wow. Actually, six. Now five. 
Goak, Bert, and John, and then yeah, Pietu and Kokoni Kuro Lemma. They're all that's left, because the rest of them are down and they look like they're working up. Waking up, I would say. Rest in peace, Bob. So Blue 4, they're actually going to smoke this position and pull back uh, closer to their 1-1-3. Um, and then we also have another defensive line being put to the south because now we're going to have... Who is this on the um, Op 4 side? You know where the Finnish guys are for Op 4? Uh, I saw one up to the top up north, Kokori Um That's a Finnish name if I've ever heard one, but I don't know if anyone else from the, the Finnish crew are still up. Um, so uh, the Finnish guys for um, Arma Finland were uh, Charlie. Uh, Charlie 2 specifically, and I don't really see them anywhere. Um, yeah, they're not even on the roster. Oh, no, they you are. find yeah. uh, Furion, um, Torhodi. Uh, I don't. No, they're they're all they're all. Yeah, they're dead. part of that northern it's... attack. Yep. So Char it was Charlie too, and I'm looking at the roster. Severe, Tiemis, Eli Elias, uh, Totori. Yeah, all of them. Um, except for Totori, you're dead. And I think Pietu as well, but I'm not sure. So Op4 setting up on the south to make another push, but again, they're going to be fighting strengthened forces. Uh, Op4 to the north, still just five dudes are up. I don't think... Yep, there's no medics that are up, so the guys that are bleeding out aren't going to be able to be brought back. And uh, Op4 is, let's see, 100, 200, 300 meters away from their Winter Strike team. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, and you even have Victor scanning the horizon that they're coming in with thermal, <laughs> so he might spot them coming in. If not, if that's not what he's looking for, he's probably looking for that other helicopter and wondering where it is. No, he's looking down. I think he's looking for the crew. He's well aware of that possibility. Victor's a, a veteran. He always takes the mad team as well. So he knows how to work on the on those things. And uh, yeah, he's like scanning the rocks, checking his, checking everything. He's, he's got a team going on the back of his neck. So uh, Victor on that BTR-80 has started firing at a command bunker uh, for, let's see, Sector 2's position. 113, I see adjusting, might be trying to find that BTR-80. Uh, he should have a good firing line on it. I'm surprised that BTR didn't brew up. And his rounds are landing just short. Ooh, just over the head of Skater. He needs to reposition, otherwise he's gonna get one right in the face. Whew, yeah, you're right. And it's like, uh, yep, it's going mobile now. And we have NASA and Iodin still up here. Uh, they gotta be careful though, because they're in the sight lines of that BTR 80's gun. Uh, NASA's staring at it, and the BTR is staring right back. He's got the 203. He needs to hit it with that 203 and try and take out uh, the BTR. Though Victor gets out. The BTR is now not being crewed. Victor was an engineer, so I think he was able to repair some parts of it, but he's now he's looking up with his gun, and NASA oh. takes him out. Oh, he drops and he starts filleting the dead body of his comrade. That's he could, <laughs> he could um still wake up though. I'm not sure if that was a headshot or not, but that was a beautiful shot by NASA there. That um op four on that northern flank is pretty much falling apart. What is? Ooh, that's a good name. Op four is making a call here. They're having that southern team push to the middle. Between the two positions. That's very risky because there's not a lot of cover here. I guess because Blue 4 has fortified themselves in these two positions. They're trying to make up for lost time. You also have that 113 pushing to the south now. But they gotta be careful because if that if anyone spots them and they tell the 113s, then that's gonna turn into a massive kill zone here. Well looking at that position from uh the building oh my God, that, Victor. um Alpha's at in sector one. It's really hard to see them uh, moving through that fog. Um, so Delta, although Delta does take a casualty up in the, on top of that ridge. Hey, um, Victor just shot the two guys swimming. That or they died, I don't know. Or they bled out. 
But he's, he was looking right down at him. I didn't see any shots, so I think they bled out, but... Wow, like, yeah, he knew they were coming. <laughs> also, um, Victor Koak woke back up. He's now in the BTR-80, probably bandaging himself. Uh, NASA and Idean, they don't have any AT, and we're hearing that 113 come back as well. My question is, does Op4 have any AT? Uh, they do. Yeah, they got those RPG-7s with Yep, John's heads. pulling it out. Hmm, I want to see this push from Red 4 work, in, but... Well, let's do a quick head count. They got, uh, it looks like seven inside the sector itself. Uh, the 113 and then two so more red four. Uh, nearby and then another two. So they have 11 total. So they've had three casualties in Bravo. Uh, plus the 113. So by uh, the way, just to keep up with casualties, uh, three guys that were part of the Northern Defense Force uh, that were part of Bravo have gone down. But still, I mean, right now, I would say for every Op 4 guy, there's probably two to three Blue 4 guys still alive. Uh, I'm thinking maybe... Op 4 is, ah, I see what they're doing. So they're going to attack Sector 2 from the direct south where there isn't anyone. And they could probably get a surprise jump here. But at the same time, the Matt team... No, the Matt team's distracted. They didn't know that Op 4 drowned. Um, or ran out of blood. So they're not looking at this position. That's giving Op 4 the opportunity to get right up to this position. And no one in Blue 4 is none the wiser here. They're not even thinking right. to look right. Yeah, Pogo in the bunker itself. He is looking northeast now. As Jethro is the first one to breach the uh, perimeter. And he's trying to vault in. He needs to enhance movement in. Yeah, no, Blue 4 has no idea. Uh, they're dedicating the 113 to pull back. There's another 113 coming up. There's a few guys being left up here, though. Uh, Boston and Indigo. So I believe we have about 20 minutes left, if I math is correct, in this mission. So we should be seeing something pop up in the next five minutes for time remaining. But We're seeing some uh, smoke grenades getting popped to the north as well. I think they're trying to run distraction efforts now to try to get Alpha in here. Because if Alpha, uh, if Op4 can get in there... Um, sneak their entire force in and get a few good headshots on the opening volley, they could overpower and take this sector and then displace and then try to go for sector one. But even if they're successful here, that's going to require a lot of good PvP on Op 4's end because, again, just the number advantage isn't with them. Blue 4 knows something's up, but they don't know where it's going to come from because they still have everyone on perimeter security. In that uh, sector two, they're just there's three of them just by the Hescos, just kind of looking at each other, talking. Hey, Olaf's coming in. Binox, but they're not really doing much. More fire goes to the uh, north. Uh, yep, Hippie is shooting at one of the Op 4 guys. Gunfire is going to start pulling Blue 4's attention away. Some of them are going to start looking uh, north, northeast, thinking there's something coming. 113 is also going up. Both 113s are going up. So that's good and bad because it brings both the 113s towards that sector two. But it means that uh, they're going to be looking in that direction and not uh, be prepared for this attack. As uh, Jethro and Sholin start coming in. Oh, there goes Victor. Uh, he got uh, shot out of the BTR-80 again. Uh, bullet penned and got him on the gun. Oh, and Bauer spots the attack. Sholin goes down without a fight. And yeah, the jig is up. Lusan needs a grenade and it rolls right into the face of Jethro. Cool. RPG went on a skater, but I believe it missed. Uh, actually, no, it went on Patriot, went behind him and hit Victor instead. Op 4 got sighted in that attack. They're able to knock out a few Blue 4 guys, but will it be enough? I don't think so. Not with the the push from the south of Sector 2 that got caught out of position. Yeah. The push into Sector 2 got caught you know, before they could even get a shot off. NASA uh, and Iodine yeah. are sweeping around the northern perimeter. Just Blue 4 has just too much of a number advantage. Uh, Jethro getting a good flank, taking out two guys. That is what I'm talking about. Good PvP instances. If they can make good trades like that, Op 4 still has a chance. Just heard another RPG get launched. I don't know where it went, though. Uh, and Jethro threw a grenade up to try to make sure Carl stayed down, but Carl does wake up. Uh, Shayro, meanwhile, is coming on the flank here. 
Yeah, trying to see if Jethro's going to move. Oh, the angle is so tight. Jethro takes some shots from Carl. And yep, and there's um, good suppression out in the open. Jethro has no choice but to fire back since he's got no cover at that angle. Throws a grenade. Lands it pretty perfectly on... Just about perfect. That was perfect, but Shea moved. A good call. He probably would have killed Charo with that grenade. A lot of bullets just went into Jethro. Some went into Shero too. No clear winner out of that little firefight there. Uh, and Op 4 still has six dudes. Yep, six total. Um, that are still kind of in reserve as Jethro's taking a lot of the heat. Now we have a 50 cal firing into Jethro. Those bullets are going to be able to pen that structure. And Jethro has no choice but to lay low. Uh, Shero's put a smoke grenade down to conceal him a bit. We also have some Op 4 guys on the outskirts that could start being walked in. And then we have the Delta teams. They are garrisoning this tower, and they're fighting with the superior numbers of the southern garrison. Oh, Jethro goes down for the count as well. And oh. uh, just as Hudson and his crew are starting to push in, he's going to find Connor pretty unsuspectingly. Hudson's trying to eat a grenade over that building, but he's taking way too long. Goes far. Wow, did you see that? Someone, one of the blue four guys was shooting at Dooley and then Track just immediately shot him. Oof. It was a beautiful headshot. More grenades being lobbed in here. Pogo's still in the command building. And we also have Shayro going around the flank here. Duty also yeah, firing did. into the shack, not realizing it's a cereal box and he has no way of penning. <laughs> and then Hudson flanks around and gets Carl through a little, um, nice little Ooh. kill hole there. So they're doing some work, and hopefully the woman threes should have known by now that something's up, and this four should uh, pull back. Jero coming around, he got Dooley. Pogo now engaging with the two guys on the Overwatch for Op4. Blue Force still doesn't know that this massive attack is going on. They're still trying to see if Op4 is going to come from the north, because Op4 originally started by popping a lot of smokes up there and firing a few shots. But now we have Arcor coming in with this 113. Now, the real question is, does Op4 have any AT? I don't see any. Oh, Hudson has it. So if he can find an angle on that 113, like right now, he needs to pull out that RPG. There it is. And he's got a perfect shot and gets it right on it, knocks both of them out. And then that other 113 is staying back. Yeah, both the driver and gunner are knocked out. I'm not sure if that'll cook off or Nope, they died. That was right into the driver's hatch. Penetration absolutely went through the driver and into the gun. That was yeah. Wait, Patriot looks like he survived and popped out. His gunner is dead, though. I saw his head poke through the uh, top hatch. Uh, and now he gets gunned down by the two surviving members of the northern group. Meanwhile, looking back at the southern attack... Uh, one guy was killed trying to run up, but Blue Force still has such a massive numbers advantage here. Uh, and I yeah. think another Op4 guy just got killed because I am not seeing his name come up anymore. Yeah, this is pretty rough for Red 4. I mean, they're doing a, they've done a great job, more than I thought they would with uh, Sector 2 here. Uh, uh, still have a bit of work to do. they got to kill three more people, but go ahead. Iodine and NASA have pulled back. Hippie is the only guy still up that was part of the original garrison. He gets a kill on an Op4 guy, though. Uh, gets returned on by a PK. Uh, that's a PKP gunner, so this is part of a Delta team. No, that's a PKM. Never mind. I thought it was all black. So Hippie's trying to maneuver around. Uh, Hudson's going to catch him out of position, though. Oh, shot right in the ass. Don't yeah, but he's hitting a tree. Gets Hudson, away. Hippie rolls over. Hudson's going to immediately peer out again. And Hippie is trying to lock that position down. Hudson needed to reload a mag, and then Page to I don't even know how to pronounce his name, gets him from the south. Um, NASA's dead as well. I don't see his name anymore, but Iodine is still up. And you gotta give it to Op4 here. They have a they've been able to completely capture this sector. Uh, Iodine shooting uh, Page, you getting some revenge. Dually blue on blue to that guy as well, but didn't kill him. And now Dean is moving around. He's got to be careful. Hudson now putting his head up. Iodine doesn't see him. 
and he gets knocked out. Wow. So Hudson probably heard those footsteps, heard the bush rustle, so we just got up there. Dean wasn't able to figure out where he was coming from. Patriot also getting double tapped here. I mean, Op4 still has a chance. It's, it's, they, they've narrowed the gap there. I'm very surprised that even though they were spotted, uh, they were able to still clear that because Blue 4 still thought there was a double waved attack. Because you gotta understand, Blue 4 doesn't know, again, that MI24 was lost and an entire squad was lost. So they're still playing it extremely cautious. And through that, Op 4 has been able to bounce back. Now, let's do a number, a uh, head count here. So we have two alive, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Op 4 guys alive to. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, because two are in the 113. So pretty much two to one for Op 4. Actually, I didn't even count the guys on Overwatch. 17 for Blue 4, because uh, they still got two on the hill, but they're out of position. So if Op 4 can PvP like that again, they could still potentially win this. It's not likely. But, yeah. But it could but happen. It so what you're saying is there's a chance. Yes. Well, there's always a chance, but based on Op4's performance on that Northern Vector, they did pretty well with that. The issue now, though, is they have to find an angle to come in on this position, but Blue 4 still has good overwatch from the Lighthouse, uh, and they're going to be watching to see what Op4 does, and it's just... Um, look at the lighthouse and then look at, uh, southeast directly on your compass and then look a little to the east. If Blue 4 were to put a guy to watch that strip of land, they'll know where Op 4 is going to go. It's just a massive clearing. Oh, the clearing between Sector 1 and the next tree line? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look on the map, it's between two yellow strips as well. There's the 15-minute uh, warning, so Op 4 minutes. has to move quick here, but... No, they just, there's just not a lot for them to maneuver with. Um, we still have Blue 4 fighting with uh, some of the surviving members of the Delta team. Their marksman, Wreck, is still alive. He could thin out a few Blue 4 guys as well, but... But that Op would expose him, and they'd probably get showered. And yeah. Out, but... Op 4 just doesn't have anything good to maneuver with. Look at um, Hawkey's position. Look at the building the Hawkey is in. I'm seeing Op4 take the uh, 50 cal out as well. Hockey is... He's in Sector 1. Yeah, he's keyholing with that open Sound window. Again, off. smart call, but... Look, look to his left. Look to his left. Oh, and he's got the 50 cal knocked over as well. <laughs> yeah. I just that funny as well. So we have Nemesis. He probably hasn't seen much action today. He's going to blindly suppress up there, try to put some pressure on Op4, at least make them respond to what's uh, shooting at him, because those bullets are going to be clicking off nearby. So again, good call there, because what Nemesis is doing is he's putting pressure on Op4. Op4 got a 15-minute warning. Op4 is now under fire. All Blue4 has to do is wait Op4 out. Also, Plett was caught in the open here and killed, unfortunately. Uh, well, he's unconscious, but I don't think he's gonna wake back up. So Wreck is the only one up there. Hazard, I think, going for some double taps, but yeah, Op4 needs to make a call, and they have to do it quickly. Skater boy pushing up with that one one three. Pushing way, sir. Uh, wait, yeah, that's strange. And he's shooting at the tower, but it, they're like none of those shots are good. They're going all around the tower and they're just scaring the hell out of Wreck. Yeah. He's going up into the mountains. It's not a bad call, actually, because Blue 4, uh, if we were to look at their eyes. So they have, um, they got Boston taking some pot shots, but look at this. So as I predicted, Indigo, he's in a position where he can watch that massive open area. So he's going to know where Op4 is going to go. So I think they're going to have that 113 go up on the hill and try to get some top down shots on Op4 because at that range, that 50 cal can be somewhat effective, uh, but it's clearly out of RPG range for Op4. And now it's doing its blind suppression, trying to fire at Hudson here. Actually hit Hudson's leg and is forcing him to go into a thin building. 
but uh, we've already seen 50 cal penetrate that uh, structure. So if uh, Skater Boy keeps spraying with that 113, he could potentially get a kill. But all this is doing, up oh, um, Blue Four isn't playing to kill. Oh my gosh! Wait, no, 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 no. Paradise is carrying an yes. op four, dude. Oh, and they're suppressing that tower. <laughs> Blue Four is just looking to stall at this point. They're gonna win by time. Um, yeah, op four. So now Pure yep. Paradise, who's part of Cadian X. Oh no, he died. Though. No. Oh, oh. I blame. I blame. Uh, was that his red door? No, that was. Hazard. And they're looting and his body the, immediately. <laughs> Blue Four. Did the double taps? I blame him for. Ah, uh, Blue Four trying to play the humanitarian card, but Op Four, like the true Russians they are, are good at resisting capture. So, uh, we see Op Four forming up on the western corner. Unfortunately for them, that's going to be the easiest corner for Indigo to spot. Uh, he's moved a little bit back, uh, probably getting. I did see Op4 give a few suppression shots up to their position, so we probably thought he was in danger and pulled back a bit. Meanwhile, Boston's still pulling 360 security up here because they don't know that those two Op4 guys drowned. Again, part of that fog of war. But uh, Indigo needs to get out here and look at this Overwatch because, again, he's getting fired at. No, they're shooting at Boston. He exposed himself, but like yeah, I said earlier, shots too. they can easily pull west and then come up at a different part of this hill and be perfectly fine. But now Indigo is going to come out, try to get some recon data here. Uh, 113 charging back into the AO again. But at this rate, just to check the clock, there is going to be about either 10 or 5 minutes remaining. If we were to do math, 45 plus. Uh, bottom, bottom right corner. Oh, you're right. Yep, 10 minutes remaining. It's hidden under the <laughs> menu and then the not connected to TeamSpeak portion. Yeah. Nemesis, meanwhile, getting a really big spray going on here. Probably saw Hudson uh, missing all of those shots, but forcing Hudson to lower himself. And that 113 is circling Rex's position like a hungry shark. Rex, so far, he's been suppressed so many times, he hasn't really been able to get out and try to get some pot shots on these blue four guys and that is costing up for uh at, how do i put this since up four isn't able to suppress anybody or get any kills blue four isn't going to be focusing on that tower because they're going to think everyone's dead so instead they're going to focus on the known uh the perceived threat um so, actually that uh, would be the known threat so yep. skater who is the gun of that 113 is fucking dead you're joking he is dead he got sniped. I don't know if it was from Wreck or from one of the riflemen. It had to have been from Wreck though at that range. So Wreck probably turned around. Uh, there are some uh, open spots on uh, that tower, and yeah, beautiful headshot would have delivered that insta kill. So poor Skater Boy. Yeah, not kidding. As the 113 tries to arm itself, and uh, oof, that nice on my life flash before my eyes. But yeah. All right, we had to clear for Op4 go down. Nemesis again, just doing a lot of work with that 249, getting some nasty suppression, and he actually was able to get a hit. Uh, a grenade getting thrown out close to Hudson's position. Ooh, I, uh, trapped, though, but, I don't uh, see any bleeding damage. His arm looks busted, but I don't see any blood drops uh, underneath him. Yeah, very true. He's got two guys the, up in that tower. <coughs> teams will switch for round two, two and round three, his, yes. Uh, his direct front, but we'll see what he's able to do. So Hudson popping a smoke grenade. Uh, that's going to give him away if Pure Paradise looks out at it uh, just to see it go. Um, you know, because he'll know someone's there to pop said grenade. Nemesis still doing Overwatch. Doesn't notice oh. it. And, and there is Paradise looking out the window, shooting at Hudson's position. Hudson only has a single tree for cover. He was hit, so he's trying to do a bit of bandaging. If uh, they had 203s up there, that'd be pretty oh, effective. Another name. grenade gets popped. Well, doesn't look like it did too much damage. He's trying to peek out again from behind the bush. He has that bush for concealment, able to break the silhouette. Good eyes on him. But Cap the marksman is also flanking, uh, getting some shots in. Hudson dropped one. Like, oh, oh, the I'm not sure if it was Hudson or Wreck that got that kill, though. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. I, I think Wreck it was Wreck. Yeah, Wreck is looking at Poehammer's posi position, so that might have been him. Yep, so now Wreck is getting those thin out shots. He'll have to be careful because he has Ziggs now looking up at his position. Wreck is using that little keyhole uh, on the rooftop, so he won't be. Um, he's very. Okay, it's a very good idea here because he's limiting his avenue of fire just so he can engage those players on this one flank. Oh, but people. 
Uh, oh. Hudson gets mowed down by Nemesis. Also, uh, there was someone with Nemesis who went up, but he got shot. I'm willing to bet um, Rex that was right. Rex so, probably yeah. got him there too. Yeah, so again, Rex doing a good job thinning out numbers. Uh, Nemesis getting a good spray down kill on Hudson, but Hudson could potentially wake back up, but he was shot a few times already. So, oh, now he's taking more shots to the ass. He's not waking up after that. But now Rex has to try to find another place to try to get a decent angle and he's doing his best here he's um you know going through these little oh, slits here back up. hudson wow but the problem with this now is unless the red force still oh, he's not yeah yep, hazard immediately seeing that pumps in full of lead and he is down op four now down to five players yeah. blue four up yeah, to two three four piece. five six seven eight nine ten twelve so five to twelve here again and well not counting the two on overwatch so 14. Yeah, it's it's messy. Op4 just doesn't have a way to come in here because if they try, Blue4 is going to know it because they have those dudes on Overwatch. They have them on Overwatch and they have the perimeter as well. He's got like, that Hudson perfect able, opening like, right there. Toward, uh, like at Fellheimer's building. Like, he got up really close. If he had the support from the rest of those guys, he might have been able to do some more. But, I mean, obviously that's, you know, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You know, speculation, but... Uh, I, I, I don't see a way for uh, Redford to win this as we go into less than six minutes now. Maybe uh, maybe Blue 4 will arm their 113 next to a group of people and uh, Karma will just even like, it out. Yeah, just, you know, level half of them. Um, yeah. And we just see some bullshit like we saw last night in TMTM. Don't remind me. <laughs> Non-Euclidean Geometry! Oh, and... There goes the 113! Who was that? Was that, uh... I'm looking for the shooter. We have Op4 putting a guy on the beach. He waved down Blue4, I guess to make a sacrifice play to try to bait Blue4 to revealing their position. I, and it's Indigo and Boss. I don't know. They... I mean, Indigo's using Iron, just the madman. But, um, like, they can easily see that shit. Russian Tech's getting shot a few times in the ass, doing his best to fire back, but I think he's a distraction so those other Op4 guys can move through on the smoke side to try to have a chance here. Also, was Flying Finn in this round, or was it just Yanni? Uh, I want to say... Flying Finn was in here. Um, yeah, he's in here. He's a uh, Scandi Recon. Yeah. Okay, so he he got killed off. Oh, oh no, he's back here. Gotcha, gotcha. So again, they're still pulling some good 360 here. Um, actually, no, Yanni's just waiting in. The, or, excuse me, Flying just waiting in the back. But let's see, we got four minutes seven seconds. Op Four is gonna close the gap. Try to get in with some CQC. Uh, they still have Russian Tech's guy. He was able to bandage himself up, took three shots to the ass. Uh, he was able to basically distract Blue for, uh, at least for their scouting, but it looks like uh, Indigo Fox spotted the Russian Tech's guy again because he's clearly visible on that beach and might line up a few more shots. Op4, meanwhile, taking a few shots up at that previous building. Nemesis now responding with some suppressing fire. Managed to, I think, hit uh, the private first. Actually, they're both private first classes. Um, Triac, I believe. Grenade gets thrown really close. Probably just did some shrapnel damage as well. Oh, and one of them just goes down to uh, Russian Tech's guy to the uh, his north. The guy mm -hmm. on the stairs, right by Nemesis' position. And uh, you know, little here, little there. But Blue 4 isn't able to answer, at least not yet. They haven't been able to answer from the hill, and uh, three minutes. the guy on the beach has been able to push up. There's a lot of work still to do, and I don't think three minutes is going to be enough, but they're still trying to make an effort, which is commendable, to say the least. Smoke grenade getting popped up, that other Russian text guy. At least I think it's Russian. He is trying to move up to that position. Blue 4 is responding by firing some shots his way, but at that range, they're not going to be too, too accurate. Ooh, Golfer uh, finally dies. He was in the 113 when it blew yep. up. See his body right and there. We're seeing six on five, actually. This is 
getting to be an even fight somehow some way oh but the russian tax guy does no he pushed up both of the russian uh guys have pushed up i think they're serbian actually so they might be angry at us after this but nemesis doesn't see um doesn't oh see wow to his right and the hawk he does oh hockey gets the kill but then no nope. oh, and nemesis is now going to come out as the handgun's drawn and mow him oh. down Oh, and then we had one of the PFCs get hit too. Uh, that's that's well, it. That is it. Op four. I in, in one fell swoop. Yep. All of Op four's uh, chances go down the fucking drain. Oh, so fucking just unfortunate. That's All right, Delaric, he's coming up. Marksman is doing his best to assist him. Nutmeg's looting bodies here. I mean, Delarky does have a PKM. That's that's the gun you're gonna want for something like this. But one uh, minute, eight, seven, six, fifteen seconds remaining. He is now coming into the building. Shoots Nutmeg dead, and sees all the bodies from Rex work. Oof, yeah. Now I wonder if he gets in the zone in the minute mark, is he gonna be able to keep it going? Not Meg wasn't double tapped. Uh, oh, I thought he woke up for a second, but no, he just went back in unconsciousness. Uh, I don't think so because uh, it's just uh, even with him. Uh, I don't know, but I don't think so. With him in the objective now, I think he's gonna have to clear five people out in thirty seconds. All right, we've seen crazier things in TSB. Let's see what happens in FNF. The clerk's just slicing the pie, trying to take it as slow as possible. Hold up, Nemesis, Nemesis is... is running around. Spots deck! Suppresses his route. That pushes deck, uh, forces deck to push back. Uh, Yanni moving with Nem now. Grenades are being popped left and right of the building. One gets caught in that trench, though, so it doesn't roll back fast enough. Deck now breaching through that same spot. Oh, Eight. The shit out of it. Seven. Six. Five. Four, three. Two, one. And that's GG. Yanni goes up for the fucking post round kill. Oh, and did Nem just. <laughs> Nem just killed Yanni! And now he's shooting up at Wreck! Oh, maybe Wreck got Yanni. No, no, um. Nem getting blown away! <laughs> um, oh God, Yanni and Nem up? were in between each other and, um. What you might call it? Um, oh, Nemesis shot Yanni. So, whew. Uh, hey, Lear, before we hop up, I do have to actually uh, leave you for the other two rounds because I forgot that I'm doing something with Sparky uh, in about 20 minutes. So that's my fault. Oh, that's okay. I really um, I know what you're doing. I um, I turned that one. Um, I said maybe though because of uh, what might happen. Oh God, it's a three-way again.